Good morning, my name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back to my channel. Today I am here to do my August wrap up. I know it's the middle of September, but I've been taking some breaks and vacations. In fact, I have today to film this and tomorrow and to edit and upload this, and then I'm going on another vacation. So obviously my videos are a little less prominent this month. So in the month of August, I read eight stories. I read three graphic novels, one novella, and the rest were novels. And I'm just going to go in the order that I read them. Some of these books were done for readathons. As I introduce each book, I am going to list down below the readathons that they were for. Let's get started. So the first book I finished in the month of August was Ray Bear by Jordani e. Fuego. I know that this has been a YouTube darling, and so I was hesitant to pick it up even though the concept sounded really interesting. And I finally gave in because I knew that the sequel was coming out in August as well. And I was like, well, the best time to read it is if then if I, and if I love it, I can then just get the sequel right afterwards. So Ray Bear follows Tara Sai, who in her early childhood is isolated from the world and has grown up in ignorance, as well as being ignorant of the society around her. She is also um, she's been starved for love. Nobody is allowed to touch her, or those who could don't want to. And that is because when she touches someone, she can read their thoughts, their emotions, and she can give people thoughts and emotions. Or when she turns of a certain age, her mother, who she call well, her mother, who everyone calls the lady, comes and says that she is going to be going to the capital in order to compete to be, or to be a ray bearer for the future king. And her mother also tells her that once she loves him, and the best, once she loves him and becomes his ray, she is then to kill him. How their society works is the king, as he chooses different advisors or rays, then he becomes immune to different um, different ways to die. So then the only way he can die is either being killed by a member of his ray or old age. Teresai goes to the capital. She's not sure what to think. And she meets Deo. And she ends up actually liking him. And she doesn't want to kill him because they become friends. And then she, as they are growing up, she's trying to figure out a way where she won't become his ray because she doesn't want to have to kill him even though she has grown to love him. And the beautiful thing about this is this love isn't a romantic love. And so she does not want to become his Ray. And he, he keeps asking her, do you love me now? And she's like, well, that's kind of weird. You, you keep asking me that, but no, you know, she doesn't want to join his Ray because she doesn't want to have to kill him. Something I think that this book does really well. Basically, this book, in the hands of anybody else, would have been four different books. Each part where of where Teresa is growing up could have could have been expanded to be a book by itself. But Jordi Fueco writes it so well that you don't feel like you have actually missed out on anything on the journey of watching Teresa grow up and figure out who she is. The story is just captivating, and I really loved this book. I gave it five stars. I think it deserves to be a YouTube darling, as they say, because it was the breath of fresh air that it was needed. So if you are still on the fence about whether or not to read Ray Bear, go pick it up. So the next I read Alatsue by Darcy Little Badger, and this is like an alternate history of the United States. Like Some things are still how things went in this world, in our reality, right? But then the, this world has vampires and other things. I, I heard some people say it was debatable whether you would consider middle grade or young adult, and I think it is on the cusp of both, 
the main character, Ellie, or Ilatsoe, is 17 years old, which you would think would go for yeah, or young adult. However, the way this story is written, I think it would really appeal to a younger audience. And so thus, I think it worked really well for my middle grade prompt. It was a little bit of a slow start for me, and I wasn't sure at the very beginning how I felt about that. Ellie's family has the ability to talk to ghosts or to raise the dead. However, they don't do that with humans. That is completely taboo and that's a dangerous thing. But animals, fair game. And in fact, her grandmother has a mammoth that she has raised from the dead. And Ellie has raised her beloved dog. So the book starts after introducing uh, you to Ellie. It doesn't jump into the world building really what or like extremely fast. It like I said, it was a little bit of a slow build, and then you were slowly dropped information. So the book starts off where Ellie gets a bad feeling, and her spirit dog is acting weird. And last time this happened, I think her grandfather had died. And so she's very concerned that something's wrong, goes to find her parents who had gone on a date night and finds them and makes sure they're okay. And when her parents turn on their cell phone, they have missed messages from an aunt and uncle and it ends up that one of her cousins was in a bad accident. That night, her cousin comes to her and in a dream and tells her that he's actually been murdered and asks her to go protect his wife and child. And this is where this book is brilliant. Ellie goes and talks to her parents. Her mom has flown out ahead, so she goes and talks to her dad and says, "Cousin, my cousin came to me and this is what my cousin said. And her dad 100% believes her. There's no like, oh no, that's not true. No, in this world, that that happens, that's true. He agrees that if the police don't decide to continue trying to figure out what happened, if they say it was an accident, if it really was just an accident, then they will, the family will do their own investigation. And Ellie and him go to the funeral, the police come back and say, oh, just an accident, no foul play. And they start investigating from there. I'm not sure if this is going to be a series or if it's just a companion novel or if it's just a standalone, but the world building was really good and I really enjoyed this book. I ended up giving this four stars. Next I read A Record of a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers. And this is number three in her Wayfarer series and this is focused on the Exodan fleet. The Exodian fleet is older, it's starting to decay, and in fact, there was an accident where one of the big ships was hit and many people died. And the community is still dealing with that loss. And so the thing with Becky Chambers is her books are always focused on the characters, and they're very much a character study, and then it's theme-based. So you're always going to have multiple viewpoints, and the same thing with this and then you have the themes that what I have found they really make you think past when you read the book. At least that's how those books are for me. I know a lot of people are like, oh these are just heartwarming and hopeful. I find them more to be like make me think. I mean the first book in this series was definitely more like Flyerfy-esque, but all the ones after that have had very strong themes and they don't shy away from pointing out things in our society that are bonkers, basically. So I think one of the main thing, one of the main themes this time around, was change. Things change, and change isn't a bad thing. In this, um, change can be good, but change always means that there has to be a shift. One of the changes in this book is how much technology does the Exodan fleet want to accept or add. For example, they 
have they have received the offer to have an AI which could manage a section of the ship which has people who do that job themselves and one person's like I enjoy my job so they're not happy that an AI is going to be replacing them at the same time you have other people who they're trying to figure out should I still live here and is this actually the best thing for my family you have a young man who's growing up and you know dreams of leaving the Exodan fleet and trying to find his place in the world and so you have this balance and interconnectedness of characters that is all revolved around change and how their lives are changing or how they how they want their lives to change so for me change was like the big theme in this book which as someone who does not like change or does not handle change very well that's one reason why this book has just been like making me think longer and longer and longer and I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars, but I can't say I love this book. But I really enjoyed it, and I probably will read it, and that might... I know I'm going to reread this book, and in the future, it could increase the rating, just because I will be looking backwards. I don't know about you, but rereads, you always get different things out of them. Next, I read A Psalm of the Wild Built also by Becky Chambers. And I was really looking forward to this. This is a novella that is focused on her like new series and it is about a tea monk who meets a robot in a world where robots are sentient and haven't been seen for many years because they wanted to live separately and the humans let them go. And so they're now one human and one robot are meeting again for the first time. The robot wants to know what do humans want and the tea monk is like, I don't even know what I want. And it was a really good read. I look forward to continuing with this series. Um, if you would like to hear further thoughts, please check out my video about the Choose Your Own Adventure Readathon. I do have that time stamped so for the different books that I read so you can go ahead and look at that specifically. And I gave this book five stars. Then the next book I read was The Bone Ships by R.J. Barker and this is a fantasy set on the sea, on ships. In this society the best ships are built out of sea dragon bones but the sea dragons have been extinct for many generations. But the sea dragons were all hunted to extinction. And as the bigger, stronger boats have been breaking down, those bones have been recycled and the ships have been getting smaller and smaller. Now, our main character, Joran Twiner, is the captain of a what they call a death ship, which means that the, it's a crew of convicted felons. And instead of just killing them outright, they have been put into the naval fleet their ship is painted all black, and the idea is, well, they're going to die anyway, might as well die, you know, fighting our enemies, the Gaunt Islanders. So like I said, Joran is the captain, and then at the very beginning of the book, Mias Gilbran challenges him to a duel for his captain's hat, and he loses. And instead of killing him, Mias takes him on and makes him her first mate. And I will... I will admit that I was more intrigued with Mias than Joran. At first I found Joran very whiny, but you come to find out that he's grieving. His grief is still very new. Um, and it was a pretty good, you know, I felt like it was an accurate portrayal of grief, especially after the loss of a loved one that is not expected. And it was fun kind of watching Joran as he is at first thinking he's going to get his revenge, he's going to get his ship back, even though he knows that nobody on the ship actually respects him as captain. He was kind of made captain because he wasn't a part of any of the factions. But now he has Mias, who is training him on how to be a proper soldier, a proper naval officer.
she had been a captain of another ship in the Navy and then something happened and she was convicted and was sent to this, this ship. And Joran learns quickly that Mies has an agenda of her own. In fact, rumors have started that, or in fact, rumors have been found that there's another sea dragon and that it is coming. And so Mies decides that she wants to protect the sea dragon and she convinces the ship to follow her. She doesn't give them all the information. Joran has the information because he was in the meeting with her, but the rest of the ship doesn't have all the information. So they think that they are going to have glory by killing the sea dragon and that will then remove them from their convicted status. But that is for conflict further on down the line. And this was a fun ride. It does get a little heavy in the first few chapters talking about the ship, but you really do need to know how the ship functions for later as it's talking about the battles. It makes way more sense to have an understanding of the ship. And the way Barker does like and the way Barker introduces that information is helpful because Joran, who even though he's been the captain, he's only been captain for a short while and doesn't actually have a good understanding of the ship himself is learning a lot about the ship. So I adored this book and I gave it five stars. And then next, the next three were all graphic novels and I caught up on the monster series. I read volume three, volume four, and volume five. And three and four I gave four stars and volume five I gave, gave five stars. If you haven't read Monstrous yet, go read it but it's about a young woman who has a demon inside of her and she is trying to figure out her place in the world and trying to remember how everything happened, how she got the demon and what happened to her mother. In these last three volumes, you really get to see Micah and Zen working more as a team. And then Micah is having to come to accept that Zen needs to eat. And so it's best to feed Zen versus starve Zen until Zen takes over and then massacres people. So watching that relationship progress has been very interesting. And I think the newest volume comes out later this year. So that has been my August wrap up. I, like I said, I hope to get this out tomorrow or at least scheduled for later this week so that you will get to see what books I read. And please leave me a comment down below and tell me what your favorite book of August was. Thank you and have a great day.